hyperosmolar hyperglycemic state, or HHS, is a complication that's usually associated with type 2 diabetes. And it's something that's quite often misunderstood by students, or there's not too much attention paid to it in medical school. So I'm going to try and explain it as simply as possible here. So I'm going to start off by reiterating the functions of insulin. And there are two main functions you need to be aware of. First of all, it reduces serum glucose concentration, so it will push it into the surrounding tissues and into the hepatic glucose store. The second function is that it also switches off ketone production. So the other point to add is that the levels required to do each of these functions differ. So a certain amount of insulin is required to suppress ketone production, and a higher level is required to reduce glucose concentration. So in normal healthy individuals, they will have a level of insulin that is able to both suppress ketones and reduce glucose. In HHS, patients will have enough insulin to suppress ketone production, but not enough to overcome their insulin resistance, and hence not enough to reduce the serum glucose concentration. And finally, in DKA, it happens when patients are insulin deficient, and hence they don't have enough insulin to suppress glucose or ketones. So then if we think about the molecules that are causing problems here, in HHS, it's just glucose that's the problem. And glucose is osmotically active, which means it causes polyuria, and hence patients become very dehydrated. So I just want to go through the criteria for HHS. It does exist on a bit of a spectrum between DKA and HHS, but the criteria are actually fairly clear. So patients are usually very hypervolemic, their serum glucose concentration is greater than 30 millimoles per litre and importantly there is no ketonemia. So remember that they have enough insulin to be able to suppress ketones but not glucose. And finally serum osmolality is more than 320 milliosmoles per kilogram. So given that dehydration is the issue, the aim of HHS treatment is to rehydrate patients and that's done with IV fluids and you start off with 0.9% saline. So patients with HHS are often very, very, very dehydrated, and the deficit is listed as being 110 to 220 milliliters per kilogram. And you'd want to give the first three to six liters within the first 12 hours. The targets that you're looking at are the serum sodium concentration and the serum glucose. So you'd expect the serum sodium to fall by no more than 10 millimoles per liter per day. And you'd like the glucose to be falling by at least 5 millimoles per litre per hour. If 0.9% saline isn't achieving these targets, then 0.45% saline may be considered instead. And if fluids alone aren't doing the trick, then insulin may be considered, and it's usually given at a rate of 0.05 units per kilogram per hour.